Welcome to the Witnessing Report. This is Hansel and Jim and Craig and Adam. This week, we went down to Seattle on Friday and Saturday nights. And Jim, you could start off with something to share. Yeah, I had a conversation with a young man. I actually came by the table and uh, uh, took a, a book from the table, uh, the Myth of the Modern Message book, which is, it turns out it's a good thing he took that book. He said he was a Christian and then said some nice things and, and went down the street. But then I saw him a little bit later. There was uh, yet another uh, marijuana rally or something in Seattle uh, this weekend. And so I noticed this guy over talking to some of the people over there. And he was, uh, and then I noticed him go over to one of the tables where they were selling paraphernalia. And I was, I just kind of went over there and was listening to the conversation. And then as he walked away, I asked him if he was a Christian because he had mentioned that. And he said, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and then I asked him what he was doing, uh, you know, looking at this stuff, talking to people about this stuff. I told him he seemed to know a lot about this. And so uh, we got into a good conversation about what it means to to be saved, to turn from our sins, uh, repentance, regeneration. And so, uh, praise God, it was a good conversation. And he was a nice young man and uh, it was very pleasant. And so, uh, he kind of understood uh, where I was coming from with this. But the thing that struck me was how he kind of mixed Christianity with a lot of New Age spiritualism stuff uh, because, you know, the world doesn't like the exclusivity of Jesus, uh, never has. Um, so the world wants to believe that everybody gets saved. The world doesn't like to believe that people go to hell. The world likes to believe a lot of things. And so people who uh, may believe themselves to be Christians will try to mix what the Bible says with what the world says from a spiritual standpoint. And the problem with that, obviously, is that the world and the Bible contradict each other. Uh, and I pointed these things out to this young man, what the Bible said about things like hell, about the exclusivity of Jesus. But it comes down to people wanting to please the world. And the Bible says that anyone who wants to make themselves a friend of the world makes themselves an enemy of God because the world's going to hate us uh, if we obey God. And if we just repeat the things that God says in his word, if we repeat the things that Jesus said. And so this desire to have the world please us, to basically have it both ways, uh, to say we're a follower of Jesus, uh, yet deny the things he said in order to be more pleasing to the world. And so it really got me thinking about that. You know, when people say they're a Christian, they have to understand what that really means. Uh, that means the world isn't going to like you. They're not going to like what you say. And if they do like you, then that usually means either you haven't told them what the Bible says or you haven't told them accurately. And so when someone gets saved, when they say they're saved, they really have to know what that means because that means that, you know, you're not going to be part of the world. Uh, the Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. Touch no unclean thing. We're not going to have the same desires of the world and we're not going to be trying to please the world uh, because generally that means displeasing God. Yeah, that reminds me of a sermon that I heard by Paul Washer. It's called The um, Idolatry of Decisional Evangelism. It's against the biblical truth of regeneration. But his point and part of it was that the reason that the world hates us is because, you know, I'm sure you've heard the Bible verse, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's exclusive, the. And he said if we just changed, if the Bible changed the word the to a general a, Jesus is a way, a truth, and a life, then we would be totally fine because we're just another, another sort of lifestyle and everyone can get, a, can coexist together. But God is exclusive and the Bible is exclusive and that he is the only way, the only truth, and the only life by which we can be saved. Both are very true. So if you're saved, test yourself. See if you're living a holy life, if you're following after the Bible, if you're living in the light of God's word, a regenerate life, saved. And if you're living in sin, if those are your willful desires and you compare yourself to God's law and see that you don't hold up to the standard, well, you may not be saved. And God's law is a tutor to bring us to Christ, to show us our sin. So if you're not saved, well... Repent of your sins and believe the gospel. And that is presented not by a work salvation, but faith produces works. Once we are saved, we bear good works. We live a holy life. 
by God's grace and spirit. And though we may fall, it is the difference between in Hebrews 10.26 of how it speaks of, for if we go on willfully sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, versus the sin of a man like David, who when he fell into sin, he realized his sin before God, confessed it, and repented. Well, that's it for this week. You can email us at twr at jesusforsinners.com. That's twr at jesusforsinners.com. Thanks. God bless. God bless.